okay. the finance meeting. Just just one thing I'd like to say. Um, um, I would like to resign as vice chair of the finance committee as of now. Oh, right. Okay. okay. Close of meeting. Thank you. Mm -hmm. It's over time, so are we going straight on to the planning and environment? Yes, uh, is Ashley fit and ready? And yes, go go for it, go for it. Might take a short break before the main meeting, though, eh? Okay. Well, depends how it goes, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Crikey, it took us a long time. Uh, are people being, do, do people have just one connection for the whole of the meetings? Yes. Yes, uh, because there's that many people wanting connections, everybody have to disconnect, yes. reconnect, it'd be... So they will have joined already if they want Yes, yeah. Okay. Right, everybody, that means that we're now about to start the uh, Planning and Environment Committee meeting, um, which I hope I've got correct minutes for, uh, agendas for, I should say. Um, item one, apologies for absence. I haven't had any myself. No, I've not received any apologies for absence either. Okay. Number two, declarations of interest from any councillors? Uh, none. None from me, Chair. None. From me. Oh, there you are, John. Okay. Open forum. Any members of the public? wishing to speak on any of the items on the agenda. Um, just make sure I've got the right. Sorry, I'm looking at the wrong pieces of paper. Uh, given that one of the items is the, um, the updated version of the, uh, the Garden Village application, I think what I'll do, I'll, I'll take that as the last item on the agenda and we'll have a separate open forum about that just immediately before that item. So if we can limit this first open forum to all of the other items that are on the agenda, um, we'll maybe make a, a bit more useful progress that way. So anything on items four onwards, but not, not item eight at this stage. Chair, Chair yeah. may I speak yeah. on um, agenda item five? Yes. Which relates to the Grange. Yeah, five and, five and six are both the Grange. Uh, I think there's a problem with six. It's It relates to... Uh, a planning application for another village somewhere. Oh, anyway, if I may address the application 211399M, the Grange is one of Hanforth's Grade 2 listed buildings. It comprises a, a complex of several buildings set in uh, extensive and beautiful grounds, complete with a small lake. The owners are proposing to demolish a conservatory on the eastern side of the building and to replace it with a single-storey extension. Alterations to the swimming pool house and garage are proposed, together with the construction of a garden room uh, elsewhere in the grounds. No alterations to trees or hedges are proposed, so my comments will be limited to the proposed extension to the Grade 2 listed building. The application claims that the views to and from the existing building are unharmed by the proposal. However, it seems to me that the side extension destroys the symmetry of the front elevation of the building. Furthermore, the extension is of very modern design and seems out of character with the main body of the house. And this is particularly uh, apparent if you look at the um, eastern aspect of the whole building. I found the uh, diagrams in this application very difficult to follow 
And um, I would just like to comment that it would have been nice to have photographs to understand a lot of the drawings. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. I agree with that comment about the proposed extension. That does look a bit uh, brutalistic, doesn't it? But I understand, Chair, that it's in keeping with the listed building consent, otherwise they wouldn't allow it. Well, we don't know yet whether the consent... Well, I thought you had to apply for listed building consent before you actually built. No, that's simultaneous. Oh. You, you, well, when, when, uh, when I had to do work on my list, uh, grade two listed building, you had to do both the planning applications simultaneously. Okay, thank you. I mean, it's possible that the list of building consult, consent could be altered subsequently, but the initial applications would be simultaneous. Okay. As far as I understand it, anyway. Anybody, any more comments on the, the ones other than the Garden Village? I'll take that as no. Okay, so if we move on to uh, to, uh, to that very application. No, we need to do the minutes first to approve the minutes of the 16th of March. Well, I don't have that on the agenda. Sorry? I go on to item five as being... No, 21.10.4. 21.10.4 is to approve and sign the minutes of the Planning and Environmental Committee meeting of the 16th of March. Hmm. That hasn't printed on my stuff, but let's take it anyway. I've got 21, yeah, I haven't got 21.10.4, hasn't printed out. Right. Um, basically, the minutes were all resolved unanimously and there was, was, there was no objections. Okay. Anybody got any comments at all? Um, just none. Councillor Moore, Councillor Smith? No. Um. Okay. So we will accept those then. Ashley, have you got any idea why my agenda is mangled in that way? Uh, no, I, no idea at all. Um, I've just printed mine off before and it's come out fine. Is it just a gap on there for some strange reason? You can't really tell. I mean, it goes down to, on page one, We've got the uh, the open forum, and then it says page one of four, and a space for the chair and date at the bottom. No, I don't know why, because, yeah, mine's printed out. Has everybody else's printed out okay? Um, yes, uh, mine's fine. Yeah. yeah mine, mine's fine. Probably a printer gremlin. Hmm. It might have just spat it out at that point, you never know. It happens sometimes. Because you've got all the applications on the next page, haven't you? I'll then go on to um, planning application 210621. Or am I looking at minutes of a previous meeting there? You're looking at the previous meeting. Twenty-one ten five, which is the planning application twenty-one one three nine nine M for the Grange. We need to have a vote on improve on. Um, 
agreeing the minutes of the meeting of the 16th of March. Yeah, just give me a minute. <coughs> Proposal for those minutes then. Sorry? Proposal for those minutes. I'll propose. I'll second. <coughs> while I get water. In favour, I take it. In favour. In favour. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. <coughs> All right, I've then gone on. I then got item five at the top of the second page. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Planning application 21 1399M. That's the extension at the, at the Grange. Now, can I make a comment on this one, please, Chair? Uh, please do. Um, I quite agree with your earlier comment. Um, I looked at these plans and actually with um, uh, Roger Small's comment, um, they are rather difficult to envisage. It is a grade two listed building and that extension looks very futuristic to me and does not blend in with the grade two listing, the, the building as it stands. Mm -hmm. um, I am not at all in favour of it as it stands, I think it um, detracts from the whole building itself. It just it it doesn't fit somehow. It, it I don't know. It doesn't look right. I don't think it's right on a grade two listed building. It should be um, not not the way it designed in a different way for a grade two listed building. It's not uh, not not for me. I think it's wrong. Not necessarily the fact that they want to knock it down, it's the actual plan. Yeah. It doesn't fit the building. I think as far as technicalities is concerned, we can't comment on the extension not being appropriate because it's grade two listed, but because it's out of character. Right, okay. Well, I'll take your uh, advice on that one, but yes, it is out of character, yeah. Anybody else? Can we put in um, that they relook at it and give us a clearer definition of what the materials that they're going to use? And if it is grade two listed, do they not realise if they use futuristic materials, they're not going to get planning permission or they're not going to get... Um, consent for uh, <clears throat> well I, th I think I think the the way this the, 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 the approval of these is done by two different groups um, as the uh, ordinary if I can use that term planning officer who will look at it from the normal point of view as it were um, as to whether it's, you know, sound structure and all the rest of it. But he would also consider whether it's in keeping with with the area and uh, other buildings in the area and with the building that it's an extension okay. of. The listed building consent. I mean, there's no other, sorry, there's no other buildings in the area quite like this. No. Um, I'm just I'm just talking technicalities. Oh right, and that's okay. what we'll consider as the the area, but that will include the the, the building that it's attached to, of course, the Grange. Um, the listed building consent will only be concerned. The officer dealing with listed building consent will only be concerned if it in some way impacts on the listed building. In other words, we're just Change historical structure and the likes. Now, being attached to it, they might consider that to be an issue or not. Okay. Um, but it's two, two different officers. So I think, I think we're able to say that um, 
we think that the proposed extension is out of character with the with the main building. Okay. So what are you proposing to object then, Brian, on those grounds? Well, I'm, so that we uh, uh, are concerned that the proposed building, um, a proposed extension rather, is out of character with the main building to which it's attached. Okay. Uh, both in terms of appearance and materials being used. Okay, fine. Okay, Ashley, got that? That's fine. No problem. I've got that. Mm. The, is the, the 1400M that follows that, is that the, is that the correct number? I've, I didn't That's what I got sent, yeah. I couldn't find that on the planning, Ashley. How straight. Let me just have a double check. Uh, because it came through simultaneously. So, uh, so they looked... Right, didn't they? One three nine nine one four hundred. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, can I can I ask? Yes. If, oh, yes. Are we going to have I a vote? Think. Yeah, that's what I've got there. Yeah. Well, I was thinking we'd take them together. Right. Yeah, that's that's what they've given me. Yeah, fourteen hundred. And is it on the database? Um. I. Yeah, that's what they've sent me through. But if it's taking you to something different it is. on the portal, yeah. um, then I'll have to have a look at that uh, and we'll we'll get it over to the right place. Can we um, leave it with you to get the right reference number on our response then? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So if, if we can approve the, the, the wording that I've just said and make those be applicable to the main application and the listed building consent that it refers to. Mm -hmm. And then Ashley can tweak the wording when, when he's been able to clear up the numbers. <coughs> so, Chair, are you proposing that? Yes, I'll propose that. Okay. Seconder. Yes, seconding. All in favour? In favour. Mm -hmm. In favour. In favour. Okay, that's unanimous. It is. Okay, go on to item seven then, planning application 21-1566M, a single story rear extension to 15 Willow Drive. It's in keeping with the other residents. I don't have a problem with it at all. Same as. I have no problem with this either. No, nor me. I have a proposal to, it, to support it. I'll propose... I'll second. All in favour? In favour. In favour. In favour. Thank you. Right, we're skipping to item nine for now. Eight. Oh, sorry, yeah, okay. Skipping to nine, we're going to come back to eight. Uh, planning application 211716M, a single story rear extension. Uh, to replace existing conservatory, 147 Wilmslow Road. Anybody got comments? No as problem from me. Just as it's replacing an existing, yeah, it's, it is. It's, it's obviously an improvement and yeah. in keeping with the rest of them on that part of the road. Mm -hmm. okay. Councillor Moore? I concur with that. It's uh, in keeping with this same kind of extensions around the place, so I have no issues. Propose that we support it? Yeah, I propose. Second. I'll second. Thank you. All in favour? In favour. In favour. In favour. Okay, unanimous. Item 10. Planning application 21 1812M. Double story side, double <laughs> double story side, and and single story rear extension at uh, four marina close. I feel it's in keeping um, with extensions in the area. I have no problem with it. What? I have no problem with it, sir, Chair. Okay. 
Similar. Smith? Same. Okay. Propose we support it. I'll propose it. Second. Thank you. All in favour? In favour. In favour. In favour. All in favour. All right. Uh, item 11. Application 21, 1821M, single story extension to the side and part of the rear for Hope Avenue. As far as I'm concerned, uh, Chair, this um, is exactly the same as the other two applications. It's uh, <laughs> similar to other things that have been done. I agree. Okay. Councillor Smith. You're muted, John. Um, John. Has <clears throat> that, that worked? Yeah, there you yeah, go. That's it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. In agreement. Okay, everybody's in agreement, I think. Uh, so, propose yeah. to support. I'll propose. I'll second. Thank you. All in favour? In favour. Yeah. In favour. In favour. In favour. Unanimous. Thank you very much. Okay, so we're going to proceed on to item eight, which is the Garden Village. And as I said at the beginning, we'll have comments now and questions from members of the public. As, as this Chair, may I make a comment, please? Uh, should we let the public speak first? I, well, I'd like, um, with your permission, to defer this item until we are a full council again, because it's very detailed. We need more information. I'll be honest with you. I, on reading it, I found it very difficult. I think we should have one planning meeting with just this agenda and an open forum. And I think it would be much more wildly, uh, widely appreciated. May I speak, Chair? Uh, yes. I concur with Cynthia. Um, just looking at the size of this, it's, it's now quarter to eight and we're still not at the main council meeting yet. Um, it does deserve a meeting of its own. What can we discuss this evening that will have any relevance or any effect on this planning application? I don't think there's a great deal. So I'd, 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 I'd also suggest that we defer it. My personal view is that we're not going to have any impact on this planning application, full stop. But uh, I take your point. Um, but let's hear from members of the public, since I promised them that they would have an open forum. Um, give me one second. Hmm? Roger? Yeah, thank okay, you. David Pinkham's got his hand up. Yeah. Um, if, may I speak? Yes, please. Um, of course, I regret the loss of the green fields um, uh, for this site, as probably we all do. But uh, it's an ill wind that blows nobody any good, and some benefits in the form of sill monies and S one hundred six monies and so on may come to hand forth in the future. But what I would like to say is that I have some reservations about the drainage of the site. With regard to surface water drainage, the northern part of the site is planned to drain into Spath Brook. The southeastern part of the site will drain into the ditch which runs alongside Blossoms Lane and hence later on into the River Dean. The southwestern part of the site will drain into a ditch that enters the River Dean close to the wooden footbridge. I anticipate that these three watercourses will therefore receive a significant amount of runoff water. Mm -hmm. Accordingly, all three of them may be in need of some attention to prevent erosion of their banks. I found it very difficult to determine how foul water is to be drained from the site. Relatively small public sewers 
are described in Blossoms Lane and in Church Lane in Woodford. Presumably, these will take foul water from the eastern side of the site. The planning application suggests that foul water from the western side of the site may be drained into public sewers in Earl Road, <coughs> Cherrington Close, and Woodlands Road. This may mean that new sewers may need to be constructed underneath the bypass. And I wonder whether the sewers in the Woodlands Road estate have the necessary capacity. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Uh, David Pinkham had his hand raised, apparently. Thank you, Chair. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Right, good. Um, it's following on from um, Roger's point, actually. I was going to raise the same the same issues, but um, I read within the uh, papers um, that uh, uh, there's a there's a report that actually I'll just read the front the first paragraph on the sources of flood risk. It says um, information rel relating to flood risk at the site has been obtained from the environmental environment agency online flood maps which confirms that the site is located within flood zone one. The development proposal is compatible with the flood zone within which it is located. The risk of flooding from rivers or seas, <laughs> I don't know where they get the seas from, is therefore considered low. All I'd like to say is that every development so far in and around Handforth, including the 555, has been subject to flooding. Now, why would this site be of low risk? It's going to up the water has to go somewhere. There's the we have limited um, uh, streams and rivers going down to the Bolin. So I would imagine that in due time, if this full um, when all of the buildings are built on the new garden village, we are going to be prone to flooding in this area. And I think there should be another relook at the extent of flooding because they should take into account the other sites around here that have been now developed where they're starting to have problems. And that would be the comments I, I would make at this stage. Yeah. Thank you, David. Any other member of the public? Okay. Any councillors? I suppose there is the third councillor. Um, I'm a little bit concerned about that because the uh, last date for comments on the website is the 5th of May. Um, if we, I, I know that that's a bit of a <coughs> moving target. But uh, I'd be a bit worried about not saying anything. Um, when we when we um, responded to the initial application, we basically said this is a sort of a holding comment because we wait to see what the full application is. So I think it would be wise of us, even if we do have a a fuller later discussion, to put in another holding comment uh, to cover the. Uh, concerns about the drainage. I would also mention that um, there seems to be no progress whatsoever on the concerns that we raised in our initial letter, um, infrastructure facilities and so on. And uh, they also still seem to be very dependent for uh, uh, delivering sustainability of this site on having a cycle and footpath coming up Hall Road, which is dangerous enough as it is without putting more uh, soft traffic on it. Um, so I, I think that we should, by all means, have another discussion about it, um, probably a, a, a separate evening meeting about it. Um, but I think we ought to put in a holding letter again on that basis. Uh, just an idea, shall I resubmit our original holding letter and say, mm. redate it? I, th I think, you say, yeah, yes, uh, uh, the, the comments that we made on whatever the date was 
uh, st still give us concerns. We don't see seem to have seen any movement in those issues. Uh, we've also had um, concerns raised about drainage, and we have much experience now in Hanforth of drainage problems. And also, there doesn't seem to have been any solution to the problem of cycle and uh, pedestrian access along Hall Road. Uh, Chair, can I just in, uh, make another point here? There's also uh, the, the aspect of flooding. We've had flooding um, here where we are on Old Hall Crescent, um, and my next door neighbour had flooding on um, the main road there. But uh, we've also got problems with the talking about the drainage and the foul water drainage we had um leakage yet again into the river dean because um the foul water uh, channels had not been cleaned and i don't know that they have been cleaned and very recently um we had this leakage into the the river um and I can't see that any of this is going to help at all unless they look at the whole thing as one um, package. And they have not taken into account, as you say, what we've said in our first item, uh, when we, uh, the first uh, response that we made. And if you read all those responses, we're all saying the same thing, but nobody's coming up with any answers. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so would councillors support the letter on that line? On the plans? Yes, absolutely, yeah. I'll support. Yeah. Okay, uh, Ashley, we can tweak the wording. Yeah, we've got a good outline there, I think, but um, I'll, I'll run it past you guys, I think, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I think... Um, as, as before, but Calling also better. really worried about the drainage and yep. concerned yep. about the pedestrian and cycle access. Uh, yes, along Hall Road. Yeah. yeah. No, that's absolutely fine. But defer it as well to a later meeting for fuller discussion. Yes, we'll have a we'll have a separate meeting about it. Okay. Proposer. I'll propose. Propose it. I'll second. Okay. In favour? In favour. In favour. In favour. In favour. Okay. And if that's the last item. Um, yeah, that closes the meeting. We'll close the meeting and I shall also say that I want to resign from the chairmanship of the Planning and Environment Committee. <coughs> Ashley? Yeah. Are, we, are we having a comfort break before you start HPC for council? Does anyone mind having like five minutes and we come back at eight and yeah. we can be? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, okay, thanks.